Thanks for joining me in this part two of our series of three in using our design paper and all of our crafting supplies. Thanks for joining me today. So I've got these three background design papers and we're going to use some embossing folders today. This is my little box that I keep my embossing folders in. I'm gonna look for some 3D embossing folders for this technique. And we're gonna use some different colors of inks. So I'm gonna pick out one for each one and I want it to be quite different than the paper. So this is a kind of a Christmas theme, but I think it will look really pretty with this wood background. So bear with me on that one. I know we're uh, starting in spring, so <laughs> but it's it'll look pretty. And then I'm looking for one that has kind of some flower or leaf designs for this last one. This kind of nice leafy one for that abstract design. Okay, we're going to start with the abstract design. I'm going to use one of my favorite black inks, VersaFine Black Ink, and this is a pigment ink, so it's going to stay a little bit wetter. I'm going to use the side where the leaves are pushed out and the background is depressed, so I'm going to make sure that all these leaves have a good amount of ink on them. I don't want to press too hard, otherwise I will get onto that background, but I want to make sure all those vines have some ink on them. I'm going to use my cornstarch powder bag so that we can make sure that we don't get embossing powder where we don't want it. I'm gonna heat emboss this after we dry emboss it in my machine. And so we'll run this through and the ink will then transfer to this design paper. And it's gorgeous all on its own. But this will stay nice and wet for us so that we can put some, I'm using my Lindy's embossing powder and this is just a black embossing powder. I usually dump all my embossing powder on there and kind of shake it around real well. Lindy's is a good amount, uh, but not too much. And then I always just use a piece of paper that I've folded into fours so that it's really easy to get that embossing powder back in. And then as you guys know, I use this Farberware pan to emboss. It just allows for my paper not to warp at all. And you always wanna have your heat gun warmed up for about 30 seconds before you use it for the best results. Then I'm gonna do my second one, which I'm gonna use my Hero Hues, also pigment ink. This is in the Unicorn White. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I just don't wanna to press too hard. And the trees in the snow are, again, raised, and that's gonna be the image that I want to get the ink on and then the background is kind of depressed. What's important here is that you make sure that you are very careful, and again, I'm gonna use my cornstarch bag so I don't get any um, embossing powder where I don't want it, but you wanna make sure that you don't move that paper around. Once you shut that, that's where you're gonna to wanna to keep that. So you wanna hold on to that while you're getting your die cutting and embossing machine set up because you do not want that paper to move. Otherwise, the image will look blurred. And so again, I used some white pigment ink, so I'm going to use some Lindy's white embossing powder as well. I have a lot of Lindy's colors. I really like their color choices. I do well with this embossing powder, so I like it. It's a nice, fine embossing powder. They have all sorts of different embossing powders at Lindy's. Just making sure I get everything off, and then again, I will just pour that all back in. Very little mess there. I do have a little bit of embossing powder. I just want to get that off before we emboss it. Just use a dry paintbrush and that will get that off. Again, I preheated my embossing gun and here is the result of that. So it's got a nice little shine. And then for our last one, I've decided I wanted to show you all different colors. So this one we're going to use a Versamark clear ink pad. And this way we can use any color embossing powder we want. And so I actually, I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. I can't decide if I'm gonna use a pink or if I'm gonna use a gold color because there is a little bit of gold in that paper. Again, I'm gonna set this down and make sure I don't move it. And then we will put this also through the die cutting and embossing machine real quick. And then I decided to go with Gimme Five Gold. It's a nice uh, dark kind of uh, gold color. And I think it'll go really well with those flecks of gold in this pink wood tone design paper. Okay, and I embossed that and didn't need to show you that one more time. And look how all that sheen there. I really like that gold. So here are my three and I'm going to put some sentiments on these. So this one says every season brings its own wonder. So I can use that really any season, right? It doesn't have to be around Christmas time. 
And then I'm going to use a scrap piece of gold cardstock. And then I'm looking for a brown that kind of matches that blue and brown paper so I can cut a sentiment strip out of that. So then I'm going to die cut out these sentiments. I have a congrats. It's slightly bigger than my card base. So I'll deal with that later, but uh, we're going to cut these all out for now. So die cut these out. So I have a congrats. I have the shadow of the happy birthday, and then I have a gold happy birthday. And then the wood tone with the Christmas scene, I will just stamp that onto a separate piece of paper. Those of you that have been watching my channel for a while know that I don't love to stamp. <laughs> It's the thing I screw up the most, so if I can die cut out a sentiment, I love that. All right, and here's where I will stamp the Every Season Brings Its Own Sense of Wonder onto a white piece of scrap cardstock. And I chose the Early Espresso Stampin' Up Stamp Pad. I love the Stampin' Up Stamp Pads. They're nice and juicy. They make a good impression <laughs> since I'm not a great stamper. I like to use my stamping platform in case I need to double ink it. Actually, I got a good image the very first time. And I'm going to use some dies to cut out this sentiment just to give it a little bit of interest there. And this one fits it perfectly. So I'll cut that out of that paper. And this actually leaves just a little ridge just set into that die cut. I decided to take out my foam daubers and I'm going just to put some vintage photo distress oxide ink around the edges. I thought that might pop it out, but then I changed my mind and I decided to use a gold pen. This has got some gold ink on it and I'm using that depressed line that's already in that die cut and then I decided to go around the edges with that too so really didn't need that vintage photo. But I think that's going to look really pretty there and I'll pop that up on some foam tape and then we'll put that right in the middle there. But before I do that I decided I'd like some little string here, just some, I don't know if this is burlap string. <laughs> but uh, rustic looking brown string and we'll put this around. I usually put uh, some double-sided tape on the back side and that keeps my string in place but here because I already had the double-sided tape on here I used that and then I just used my had my regular tape out so I'm just using some regular tape here to adhere the ends of the string to the other side. When I usually if I use string that has some dimension to it like this one, I will then pop it up onto some foam tape so that it doesn't have that ridge in the card. So here I've got my card base and I'm just going to put some foam tape and then I'm going to go around that string. That way it just all is even and you don't have any lumps in your card. And I usually like to have a good amount of foam tape, as you guys know. And I'm not too worried if there's a little extra white on the card because I can cut that down. I make my own envelopes so it doesn't, I don't have to be exact with my card sizes. And here I'm just going to cut off the edges where it did not emboss it, where the embossing folder ended. That sentiment's going to look really pretty on there. I like the pink shadow with the gold happy birthday sentiment on it. I'm going to put that on a white card base. Use my Barely Art Precision craft glue to glue down the sentiment to the pink shadow and then I decided I wanted to put some gold thread on this and it's really hard to see it with the camera lighting but it actually looks really pretty in person uh, just gives it a little bit more dimension and this card is already coming just coming out beautifully so I really like it and then I'm going to pop that right onto there with a little bit of, I ran out of my foam was at the end, so I decided to use some of these foam dots. I don't always use my foam dots, so if I have an opportunity, I'll use those. And then I'll glue everything down onto some pink cardstock, and I'll just cut this to size. I use my paper trimmer to cut this down just to make it a little bit easier. That way I don't have to try and cut it with my long bladed scissors, but I normally do cut it with my long bladed scissors. This is just a little bit easier since it was a bigger piece of paper. Then I'm going to use my Ranger Multimedia Matte Finish Glue. This glue is a little bit easier to work with than the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue in that it lets you move the paper a little bit longer. But the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue has that amazing tip and I use it more more often than I use the Ranger multimedia glue. Both of them have a nice finish. You never see it on your card. So either glue would be good from that perspective. 
And here's what that looks like with the little thread in there. I think that came out really cute. So let's work on this last one. We've got a congrats card that we're going to make here. I've got some graduations and things like that, so I thought this might be a good card. And as I said, that brown piece is just a little, or the congrats is actually a little bit bigger than uh, the card front, but we're going to fix that. We'll put this congrats on here and then we'll actually cut another layer with that same brown and I'm just getting off the extra glue you won't see it when it dries the Ranger multimedia matte finish it has a very nice finish that you won't see and then I'm just cutting off the little edges again where the embossing folder ended so you can kind of see those since I used ink and it'll also give us a nice edge so when I put that brown cardstock in the middle another layer it'll look nice now I'm going to find some washi and I'm looking for one that kind of matches that blue color and I thought I had it but then I looked in my other tin and I found one that's even better. I get really proud of myself when I remember to use things like washi tape. I don't always think to use it. It really makes a big difference. So again, these are videos are about using our supplies. I love using my design paper because I tend to buy a lot of it and then you kind of just hoard it or you don't want to use it because it's so pretty or whatever the case may be. So today we're using our card supplies, including our washi tape. And I'm just going to cut this off and that just really looks very finished and it just gives it a little bit more interest this washi tape had a little weird line at the end there so i rolled it out a little bit more so that we could not see that line i'm just going to cut, cut off the edges and then i decided to again put this another base there so that you won't realize that the congrats is bigger than that first card base will Put this matting layer down in the brown. So the brown is the, actually the same size as my card base. So I'm going to cut it down a little bit and that way we'll still get to see a little bit of the card base poking out as well. If you don't have card stock you can always just ink some white paper just swipe some ink around the edges. Use that as your matting layer. Also it will then reduce the weight of the paper. Then I'm going to put some glue and glue this onto my card base. And you can already see that sheen of the embossing powder on there. Okay, so here we are so far, and I'm trying to decide what else I'm going to do with these cards. I think I'm going to put some extra strips there. I think that this congrats needs some gems. So I'm going to pull out some of my gems and I keep, <laughs> because I use my tweezers, sometimes they get away from me so one flew off somewhere I'm sure it'll be on one of my dog's paws <laughs> by the end of the day but just put some of these gems and trying to decide where I want them sometimes I like kind of three in a row especially when you have all these lines I think that looks really cool and I'll put some above it as well I'm just looking to make sure I kind of have the same spacing and I use these medium-sized gems so they're all the same size I think that looks really nice. Then I'm going to use some gold colored ones and I'm having trouble with this one too. I'm not really sure where I want to put them. Then I decided to actually use them as if they were brads holding that burlap string. And then for this last one, really doesn't need anything, but I'm going to put, I like sometimes to put gems where the dots are on the eyes in some of the sentiments. So here's what this card looks like, and we need to work on the inside. So I think I'm going to put some of this scrap paper on the inside. We can do something with maybe a cutout with the same pink on the inside of this card. I have some ideas in my head, maybe something like a cutout flower from a punch. And then this one, maybe we'll use some of that brown paper with some washi and make that look really pretty. So let's work on that real quick. I really do like those gems and all the shine in that one. I'm really enjoying these cards quite a bit, all from design paper. Okay, here we are with this one and I put the paper at the bottom. So I did washi, the brown, and then I took a little bit of the card, the design paper, and put it at the very ends. And then for this one, I already showed you that gem there and some of the shimmer and the little gold thread. And then I just did some punches and I put a little bit of gold in the center of them for the veins of the leaves. And then for this one, I used a little bit of the extra paper that I cut off and made just some stripes and 
two of the corners of that page. So I love to make the inside of the card look really coordinated. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed spending the time with you. Please click the like button if you enjoyed this content and also subscribe. I'd really appreciate that as I'm a small channel. I look forward to seeing you in the third of this series coming out in a few days. I'll see you then.